going on YouTube world? My name is Jamal McKinney. Appreciate you guys for tuning in today. Be sure to hit that like button if you're rocking with me. Subscribe to my channel if you are new and love great, great fire sports content. I post a ton of great sports videos weekly and almost every single day. Okay. NBA draft is right around the corner, so I figured why not do a NBA mock draft for the lottery picks. So I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna break down picks of one through 14. I'm gonna tell you guys why I think each team should take this certain player. Now, this is not me predicting who each team will take. This is me just telling you who I would take if I was the GM of each team. So it's not a prediction video. It's just basically what I would do if I was in each team situation. So. Without further ado, with the first overall pick, the New Orleans Pelicans, if I was them, I would take Zion Williamson, okay? I think this is pretty much a consensus, consensus pick. I mean, Zion Williamson, I think he's going to be an absolute stud. He has the potential to be an all-star for many years to come. Easily, I think he'll be a 20-point-per-game scorer in this league. The most hyped-up prospect since LeBron James came out of high school, guys, okay? Now, he does need to work on his jump shot, okay? But if he even develops somewhat of a comparable jump shot, I mean, the sky's the limit for this guy, okay? He shot 68% this year in college basketball. Okay, that's crazy. Uh, average 22 points on the Duke Blue Devils. And let's not forget, guys, when he went down with an injury, okay? But he came back ultimately. And he dominated when he came back. He was even better when he came back off the injury. But when he was hurt, the, let's not forget, the Duke Blue Devils still were stacked with talent. They had Cam Reddish, RJ Barrett, Trey Jones. They were struggling to beat Wake Forest without Zion Williamson. Wake Forest was terrible. So look, the Pelicans obviously trade Anthony Davis, even if they did still have Anthony Davis. I would still draft Zion Williamson. I think he's that special. On to number two overall, I think the Memphis Grizzlies need to take John Morant, point guard out of Murray State. John Morant, listen, the Grizzlies need offense, okay? Jaron Jackson Jr. was a great rookie for them um, this year, but they need more offense. And, and um, John Morant is just a playmaker. He provides that he provides offense, instant offense for the Grizzlies, okay? And look, Mike Conley, he's a little bit old, okay? They might trade him, so John Morant definitely is their future if they draft him, okay? And look, he's the perfect size for a point guard, okay? He's 6'3", 175, has amazing athleticism, okay? He can he can even shoot the ball, too, okay? He's a, he's a more than capable three-point shooter. He's an excellent playmaker, averaged a double-double at Murray State, shot 50%, 24 points, 10 assists about this year. He's an excellent passer and super athletic. He will provide an instant spark plug and it's going to be great for the Grizzlies in the future if they draft them. Okay, on to the number three overall pick. The New York Knicks, I think, get the third best player in the draft in R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett, I think he will score early and often in the NBA. Okay, the guy, there's nothing he really can't do. He can rebound the ball. He's a willing passer. He's a willing defender. And he's just a great scorer, too. He can shoot the ball pretty well. He can hit a three. He can hit mid-range shots. He can create his own shot off the dribble. He's a great ball handler. He can play above the rim. He's just, he's a great athlete, too. And he's excellent in the open floor. R.J. Barrett, you know, if you pair him with Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr., and possibly maybe Kevin Durant if he comes there, I don't know if he's going to come there, but hey, R.J. Barrett definitely will provide great offense and a great and a great future for the Knicks. I would love this pick for the Knicks right here. I think it's an excellent pick if they were to get their hands on R.J. Barrett. I think R.J. Barrett's game translates very, very well to the next level. Okay, on to the number four overall pick. The New Orleans Pelicans were able to get this pick from the Los Angeles Lakers after trading Anthony Davis. Now, there's reports that the Atlanta Hawks are potentially looking to move up to this pick. Listen, the Hawks have three first-round picks. They believe, I believe they picked number eight, number 10, and at number 17. So they may try to trade for this pick, okay? I also think the Dallas Mavericks, who do not have a lottery pick, may try to trade this pick, but we're not projecting trades in this mock draft, okay? So if they don't make this um, trade, okay, they're gonna pick um, DeAndre Hunter, in my opinion, okay? DeAndre Hunter is a great defender. He's a great two-way player. He's six foot seven, has great length. Listen, he was a big part of Virginia's run to the national championship, okay? He, he can, he's a more than capable three-point shooter. He's a good mid-range shooter, can score, okay? Not a great passer. Needs to work on his rebounding a little bit, but hey, the sky's the limit for this guy as a defender, as a two-way player. He reminds me a little bit of a young Kawhi Leonard in college, okay? He can play above the rim, too, and he was able to shut down Jared Culliver in the national championship game when they played Texas Tech, okay? So, DeAndre Hunter, I think he fits in very well. The Pelicans uh, will have a squad if they draft Zion Williamson and DeAndre Hunter. You got Zion Williamson, Lonzo Ball now, Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle potentially, okay, and Josh Hart too to pair with Zion Williamson and DeAndre Hunter. He can come off the bench or he can start for them. Andrew Holiday too. So the Pelicans' future will be bright if they pick him, okay. On to number five overall, the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think, need someone to take the pressure off of Colin Sexton. 
and I think they need to shoot. I need. I think they need to upgrade the shooting guard position. Okay. So Jared Culliver out of Texas Tech is that perfect guy. He's the perfect size for a shooting guard, about six foot five. Okay. He's great at creating his own shot. He's a great mid-range shooter. Can knock down a three. He did. He did drop the 30% shooting from three about this year. Okay. But a year ago he shot 38% from three. And he took a lot of three pointers. So that's a good sign. He's a more than capable three-point shooter. Just needs to continue to develop that. Okay. Like I said, he's a great mid-range shooter. He can definitely create his own shot. Can play above the rim a little bit too. He's very crafty. Okay. He's just a great playmaker. He provides instant scoring op an instant scoring option in the backcourt um, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He'd be a great pairing with Colin Sexton. And this pick makes sense for the Cavs based on team needs and who is on the board at the moment. Okay. On to number six overall. The Phoenix Suns, I think, are definitely in need of, of the point of upgrading their point guard position. So my belief is they should take Kobe White, point guard out of UNC, North Carolina. That's my team, the Tar Heels. So I've seen a lot of Kobe White, okay? I'm gonna tell you, Kobe White has a lot of potential. He really does. The sky's the limit for this kid. He's a six foot five point guard. He's a matchup nightmare for smaller guards, okay? He is a more than capable ball handler. He has excellent ball handling skills, can definitely play great in the pick and roll, okay? He's an excellent playmaker, can definitely shoot a three. He's more than capable of shooting mid-range shots, shooting threes, okay? And he can play above the rim a little bit too. He's an excellent finisher around the rim, okay? I think he's the perfect complement to Devin Booker. I would be more than hyped and excited to see Devin Booker and Kobe White paired up on the same team. I think their skill sets definitely complement each other very, very well. Listen, the Phoenix Suns, they have DeAndre Ayton. They have Devin Booker, okay? They need to start winning. They need to start putting some more players around them, okay? And look, Kobe White definitely provides inst an instant upgrade at the point guard position. I think the sky's the limit for the guy. He can potentially develop into a 20 point per game scorer in this league. I really do believe that. I mean, Kobe White got better and better as the season went on, and he's a natural scorer, okay? I love the pick, okay? Now, on to the um, Chicago Bulls, okay? I think they should take Darius Garland, point guard out of Vanderbilt. Now, he was limited to only a few games played at Vanderbilt this year. But in those couple games, he shot 47% from three-point range. I mean, the guy is crafty around the rim. He's an underrated finisher around the rim. He's great. He's excellent ball handling skills. And he's probably one of the best three-point shooters in this draft. He can shoot the lights out the three. He can score in bunches. He can get hot. And today's NBA game, where it's a shooting league, I think he fits right in. He's got decent size. He's six foot two. It's a little bit skinny, okay? He does need to put on a little bit more weight, in my opinion. But hey, you know, if you can shoot a three, and you can drive to the rim and handle the ball, there's a place for you in the NBA. And I think he definitely provides the Chicago Bulls with a spark plug, okay, and an instant upgrade in the point guard position. I think they definitely need to upgrade that position, okay? And look, he has a bright future in this league if he can just continue to develop, um, getting stronger, and like I said, just continue shooting that three. All right, on to the number eight overall pick, the Atlanta Hawks. I think they need to take Cam Reddish. Small four out of Duke. Now, he did only shoot about 35% from the field this year, but I really do think that it that was a tribute to him playing behind Zion Williamson and R.J. Bear because, let's be real, Cam Reddish was used to being the guy in high school. He was a high recruit. He was forced to be the number three overall option on the team, so that was very hard for him to adjust, but you can just see the clear talent right there. And the Atlanta Hawks need a wing player. They need to upgrade the small four position, in my opinion, okay? So I think Cam Reddish provides it, okay? There's nothing he really can't do. He can shoot a three. He can shoot. He can take you off the dribble. He can hit mid-range shots. He can score in bunches. He's very consistent, but when he's on, he was one of the best players in the country, okay? And look, you know, he's a willing defender, too. He has great size and length, six foot eight, has great wingspan, okay? He can play above the rim, too. I think he's an excellent pick. And listen, Trey Young is a superstar, okay? And he's easy to play with, I think. So I think Cam Reddish can really benefit from playing with him. I think that um, Trey Young's ability to shoot the ball and pass the ball and make plays for other people would really help Cam Reddish. He will fit nice with the Hawks, who already have a nice, pretty good, who already have a pretty nice good core with him and John Collins. Okay, so the Hawks get Cam Reddish at number eight overall. I really love that pick. Okay, so at number nine overall, the Washington Wizards need to take, in my opinion, Secunda Boye. Okay, look. He's a power for our friends. Now, he's a very raw prospect, but I think he's only 18 years old. He's by far the youngest player entering this draft. Okay, so he's a baby, okay? He still has a lot of room to grow and develop. Could he be the next Giannis? We don't know. But hey, he has excellent athletic ability, okay? And he can shoot. He's shown the ability to make and hit tough perimeter shots at times, okay? It's very, 
He has an inconsistent jump shot, but at least he's shown the ability. He can he can knock down some shots. He's a great rebounder. He is great at running the floor in transition. The guy can jump out the gym too. He's an excellent athlete. He's a willing defender. He can block shots too. I think the sky's the limit for this guy. And listen, John Wall's contract is terrible. The, the Wizards are potentially looking to move on from that contract and trade him. They're looking to potentially trade Bradley Beal. So the Wizards are not gonna be the Wizards. I'm just gonna tell you right now, they're not gonna be good for a long time. So they can afford to take risks and allow players to develop. I think that Sakum Deboye is a great pick for them. I think that he can develop into a nice player in the league, okay? At number 10 overall, I think the Hawks need to take Bull Bull. Okay, center out of Oregon. Listen, Bull Bull, there is some questions about him. You know, can he defend at the NBA level? Is his lateral quickness good enough, okay? And, you know, durability. He only played, he only played, I think, nine games at Oregon, something like that, okay? But listen, in those nine games at Oregon, he was dominant. He scored over 20 points per game. He shot over 55% from the field. He shot a great percentage from three-point range. Bobo Bo, is really nothing he can't do, okay? He's a seven-foot-two center that can, that can pull up and shoot jump shots, okay? He can hit mid-range shots. He can shoot three-pointers, too. And he can play well in the post. He can play above the rim. He can block shots. I mean, you don't see seven-foot-two guys that can run the floor as well as he does. Bobo is surprised surprisingly pretty quick for his size. Okay, now he's only uh, 235 pounds, so he does need to live in the weight room once he gets to the league, in my opinion. He needs to gain some weight, okay? But the sky's the limit for this guy. If he can just stay healthy, listen, the Hawks can afford to take risks. They have three first round picks, guys, okay? Drafting Bobo also makes, makes sense from a basketball standpoint in this regard, okay? But John Collins is a, their power four, okay? He loves to do his damage in the paint. So you don't want two centers that, you know, just dominate the paint. Bobo is a stretch five, okay? Because he can shoot jumpers, and he, he would be great for the floor spacing, right? Okay, so you have Cam Reddish, you have Bobo you draft, okay? You have John Collins, and you have Trey Young, who's a stud. That's a great core piece of young players the Atlanta Hawks have. Their, breaches, their future will be very, very bright. Okay, Bobo's worth the risk. So, Minnesota Timberwolves, okay? I think at number 11 overall, they need to take Nasir Little. Nasir Little is someone who I also have seen a lot because I'm a UNC Tar Heels fan. I've seen him play a lot, okay? And look, he's a raw prospect. I thought he honestly should have came back for another year of college and developed, okay? But he, he has a boatload of potential. He has some of the most bounce in this draft, okay? He can play above the rim. I definitely think he'll be great in a dunk contest, okay? But look, you know, if he just develops a somewhat solid jump shot, okay? He has a decent jump shot. He's shown the ability to make tough perimeter shots, okay? But he's not consistent at that, okay? So, he just needs to develop his jump shot. I think over time, he can develop into a solid jump shooter. If he develops a jump shot, I mean, the sky is really the limit for him. And one thing about Nasir Little, Little, I can tell you, he has a great work ethic, because you want to know why? Because as the year went on, he got better and better. At the end of the college the college basketball season in the NCAA tournament, he was one of the best players in the country. So, the guy has the potential. And I think that picking him at number 11 is pretty appropriate. I think he de can develop into a potential all-star, but he's a little bit of a risk. Okay? At number 12 overall, I think the Charlotte Hornets should take Jackson Hayes center out of Texas. Listen, Jackson Hayes knows how to score down low, okay? He's great at catching lobs. He can dunk the ball very well. Plays above the rim. Excellent catch radius on those lobs and dunks, okay? He's an elite rim protector, okay? He can definitely block some shots. He's a pretty, pretty good athlete. His athleticism is off the charts. He knows he has great post moves. Knows how to finish down low in the paint. Does need to consistently develop a reliable jump shot, but hey, he can still be a great player in the NBA without a jump shot, really, because he's a center, okay? He knows what he is. He's maximized his potential, okay, based on what he's doing right now. All right, so Jackson Hayes, I think the, you know, listen, the Hornets have not had a great elite center since the Al Jefferson days, okay? So they need a major upgrade in the center position. Jackson Hayes, I think, definitely can provide that, okay? He's an excellent offensive rebounder, excellent defensive rebounder, like I said. He can switch on to smaller players and defend if he needs to. Excellent defender, excellent rim protector, can finish well around the rim. He knows what he is number 13 overall i think Dwayne Wade's out i think you put romeo langford in romeo langford is who i pick here for the if i'm the miami heat romeo langford is a natural scorer he's very crafty around the basket knows how to finish around the rim has his pretty good ball handling skills can create his own shot now he did have a very inconsistent jump shot at indiana university okay when he played but there was reports he did 
he did play with a serious thumb injury all year. I think he had like a torn labrum or something like that in his thumb. So that might have affected his jump shot, but he's a capable three-point shooter when he gets hot, okay? So he just needs to get more reps shooting the basketball, okay? And I think he can develop into a great player. And look, he's a natural scorer. You know, he's a, he's a playmaker. Just put the ball in his hands. He has excellent size, too, for a shooting guard, okay? But he needs to work on his jump shot, needs to consistently be better on defense. But hey, getting him at number 13 is pretty, pretty good. Romeo Langford is a pretty good player. I think he instantly upgrades the Miami Heat's backcourt, okay? And the very last lottery pick, I think the Boston Celtics should take Brandon Clark out of Gonzaga, okay? He's a little bit undersized for a big man. He's about six foot nine. He's a power forward, but he's very versatile, okay? He's a versatile defender. He can switch on the smaller guards and guard a little bit. And he's a great rim protector too. He's a great shot blocker, okay? He's an underrated finisher around the basket, can play above the rim. He knows how to play the right way too, okay? He's great with the pick and roll, okay? You know, he's a great rebounder. He plays with great toughness. You can tell the guy works hard. He's a solid, front, and very sound, fundamental player, okay? And I think that he will fit in very well with the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics don't have a whole lot of needs because they're a playoff team, but hey, you know, I definitely think he can provide some depth and, you know, help for that, um, Celtics uh, front court, okay? And Al Horford is getting a little bit old, so he might be the heir apparent to Al Horford down the road. That is pretty much a wrap for this video. Be sure to like the video right now if you are rocking with me. Subscribe to my channel if you are new and love NBA, NFL, college basketball, college football content, MLB content. I cover, I cover a lot of different sports topics on this channel, not just NBA. Be sure to tell your friends about my channel if you are rocking with me as well. All right, be sure to comment in the comment section where you agree with my picks, where you disagree with my picks. I love to hear and chat with you guys in the comment section on what you think about the M NBA um, draft and what I think for my mock draft. It's been your boy, Jamal McKinney, and I'm Ghost.